Welcome back to science class. My name is Miss Rie, and this week we will be discussing inherited traits versus learned behavior. If you joined me last week, we discussed adaptations and the types of adaptations that organisms have in order to survive in their environment. So before we review this week's session on inherited traits and learned behavior, let's review what we did last week. So I'm going to show you a question and then using your notes and your foldable from last week, I want you to be able to answer it. Are you ready? Well, let's get started. So animal adaptation for 100. When an animal copies another, what do we call that? Yes, we call that mimicry. So an animal mimics another animal when it copies that animal. It might look like it, or it might do something that the other animal does in order to protect it from its environment, from predators within its environment. Next one, animal adaptations for 200. What would help a plant survive in a desert? Yes, it would be choice A. Thorns would help an animal survive in a desert. Animal adaptations for 300. What adaptation blends into its surrounding? Correct again, that would be camouflage. Let's go on to animal adaptations number one for 100 points. What is one thing an animal can do to hide from its prey or from its predator? Exactly. It can either camouflage or it can mimic another animal that the predator does not want to interact with. Animal adaptations for 200. What kind of habitat would a camel live in? Yes, a camel would live in the desert, a hot desert and dry. For 300, what animal has a body fit for swimming? Yes, that would be fish. Their bodies move side to side so that they can swim long and fast. What is camouflage? Correct again, camouflage is when an animal blends into its surroundings. What animal typically hibernates? Yes, that would be bears, of course. What adaptation protects snakes from their predators? Excellent. It would be their fangs. Their fangs inject poison into other animals. So what does it mean when an animal mimics another animal? Absolutely. It means that animal copies another animal. What adaptation would a chameleon use? Correct again, a chameleon would use camouflage. What physical adaptation would benefit the most for a duck? Answer A or answer B. Great job, the answer is A, web feet, because they need them to swim. Animal adaptation 500, how does a duck's web feet help it survive. Yes, they help them swim faster. And for 400, the Arctic fox blends into its surroundings. What adaptation is it using? Keyword, Arctic. Correct, it is using camouflage. Its white fur blends in with the snow of the Arctic. Would a plant with large moist leaves adapt to the desert 
or to the forest better? To the forest. What is it? What does it mean when a plant sleeps? It goes dormant. Yes, it means that the plant is preparing for winter by saving its energy. What do animals do when they hibernate? And why do they hibernate? Yes, animals hibernate like to sleep for long periods of time because of the cold weather they are no longer fit for. They gather food all year and eat it during hibernation. Are ducks feet made for them to swim fast? Absolutely, yes, ducks have webbed feet and the purpose of their webbed feet is so that they can swim fast. What adaptation would a black bear use? Great job, a black bear would use hibernation. And last question, what physical adaptation would help a seal swim? Perfect, they're flippers are going to help them be able to swim in the water. Great job. So now that we have reviewed adaptations and the different adaptations animals, plants, or any organism might have, we're ready for this week's session. So let's jump in. This week, we will be learning about behaviors. And there are two types of behaviors that we will specifically focus on. So. Students will be able to differentiate between inherited traits of plants and animals, such as spines on a cactus or shape of a beak, and learn behaviors such as animals learning tricks or a child riding a bike. So what is our essential question for this week? Well, what is the difference between an inherited trait and a learned behavior? Our agenda. The first thing we're going to do is create our behavior foldable. And then we will talk about the types of behaviors, play a little bit of quiz is, and then in today's session, preparing for the STAR test, it's only a few days away and we are going to master it. The materials you will need for this session include just paper, pencil, and scissors. So now that we have our supplies, let's make our foldable. So the first thing you wanna do is take your sheet of paper, fold it in half, hamburger style. And then once you have your paper folded in half, hamburger style, you then wanna take your scissors and cut one half of the sheet in half, just like it says in part two. So you do not want to cut both sides. You just wanna cut this one side in half. So now that you have cut that one side in half, you'll have two flaps. On that first flap, you wanna label it inherited traits. And on that second flap, you wanna label it learned behaviors because those are the two things that we will review in this week's session. I'll give you a few seconds to fold your paper in half, hamburger style, hamburger style. cut one half of that paper. And then once you have those two flaps, you're gonna label that first flap inherited traits and that second one learned behaviors. You have about five more seconds to get your foldable ready so that we can start learning. All right, so now that we have created our foldable, we know what the goal is, let's get started. So inherited traits and learned behavior. First off, how would you describe yourself? So I want you to think to yourself, or you can write it down, make a list of five characteristics that describe you. So how did you describe yourself? Well, you might say that you have brown eyes and that you like to skateboard. So let's make a list of words that describe yourself. Now let's look at our list. How many of your descriptions could also describe someone in your family? Now let's say that you have brown eyes like to skateboard? Well, consider this. Does anyone else in your family have brown eyes or like to skateboard? Well, probably only a few of them actually like to skateboard. But what if your parents probably has brown eyes 
if not both. Your eye color came from your parents. However, you learn to skateboard. Humans and other animals are a mix of characteristics from their parents and behaviors they learned on their own. A physical characteristic that is passed on from a parent to a baby, also known as offspring, is an inherited trait. So again, I want you to open up that flap that you just created and write down a definition of an inherited trait. I'll read it one more time for you. It is a physical characteristic that is passed from a parent to their baby. So examples of inherited traits that you can add to your foldable, they include eye color, skin color, hair color, curly or straight hair, dimples, freckles, and height. I'll give you a few seconds to write down some examples in your foldable. Are your earlobes attached to the side of your head or do they hang free? Well, that is an example of an inherited shape, an inherited trait. The shape of your earlobe is an inherited trait. Some people have earlobes that are free hanging and others have earlobes that are attached. So this trait was passed on to you by your parents. So most likely either your mom, your dad, or both have the same type of earlobe as you. But if you go to class and you look at, a, look at a friend next to you, they might have something different because their parents passed on a different trait to them than the trait that was passed on to you by your parents. So let's continue. Inherited behaviors. It is a behavior, it is a way of acting. So behaviors can be inherited too. Inherited behaviors are called instincts. So many animals are born with instincts that help them to survive. So can you think of any animal instincts? So examples of inherited behaviors, also known as instincts. When the weather turns chilly in the fall, animals prepare for the winter by their instincts. Some animals head for warmer climates during the winter. Other animals find a safe spot and curl up for a long sleep. No one taught these animals how to survive winters. They know what to do by instinct. So inherited, you can either have inherited traits like eye color, skin color, hair type, or you can also have inherited behaviors, like knowing when to hibernate, knowing how to um, travel to the south migration during the winter. So inherited can either be an inherited behavior or inherited can describe a trait. So birds protect their eggs and babies by instinct. Frogs are not born with this instinct. They leave their eggs to hatch or die on their own. Can you think of any additional inherited behaviors, also known as instincts? So now that we know what inherited traits and behaviors are, let's talk about learned behaviors. So are you better at using the computer than some of the adults in your family? If so, you've learned how to do this. You probably learned how to do this over these last few months of being in school and being on the computer all the time. You did not inherit, it, inherit this behavior from your parents. We learn many behaviors that help us every day. These behaviors include how to make a sandwich, wakeboard, and be polite to others. Can you learn behaviors that do not help you? Absolutely. They include watching TV or eating poorly. Can animals learn behaviors? Yes, 
Have you ever see have you ever seen a dog sit on command or lay down on command? So absolutely. So let's review. An inherited trait is a physical characteristic that is passed from parent to their babies. A behavior is a way of acting. Inherited behaviors are called instincts. On the other hand, learned behaviors are not inherited, but they are learned from others. I'll give you a few seconds to jot down this review so that you will be able to correctly identify the difference between an inherited trait, an inherited behavior, and a learned behavior. I'll give you about 10 more seconds. And down to our last five. All right, so now that we know the difference between inherited traits, inherited behaviors, and learned behaviors, let's see what you learned. So we are going to take the statements at the top and drag them either to the correct, one of the correct boxes at the bottom. One box is labeled inherited traits or behaviors, and the other one is labeled learned or acquired traits or behaviors. Are you ready? Well, let's get started. So this first one says brown eyes. So would brown eyes be an inherited trait slash behavior? Or would it be a learned or acquired trait slash behavior? Yes, brown eyes would be an inherited trait. It comes from your parents. So I'm going to move that down to this box. And then we're going to move on to the next one. It says five foot, four inches tall. Is this describing an inherited trait slash behavior? Or is this describing a learned or acquired trait slash behavior? Correct again, this is another inherited trait. Your height comes from your parents. Well, what about reading? Is that an inherited trait or behavior or is it learned or acquired trait slash behavior? Yes, you are taught how to read. It is not something that you know how to do when you're one month or two months or three months old. So you have to be taught how to read. Therefore, it is a learned or acquired trait slash behavior. And what about skateboarding? What is that? Absolutely. Skateboarding, just like reading, is something that you had to learn to do. You were not born with that ability. And what about getting hungry? Is it an inherited trait slash behavior or is it a learned or acquired trait slash behavior? Yes, you have been able to get hungry since you came out of your mom's belly, which means that no one had to teach you how to be hungry. So that means it is inherited. Playing basketball. What would that be, an inherited trait slash behavior, or would it be a learned or acquired trait slash behavior? Yes, just like reading and skateboarding, playing basketball is definitely something that has to be taught to you. You have to learn how to do it. But what about my black hair? Is my black hair an inherited trait behavior or is it a learned or acquired trait slash behavior? Absolutely. Black hair is inherited. This is something that you get from either your mom, your dad, or both. Now, what about these earlobes? Having attached earlobes, what would that fall under? Great job. Attached earlobes definitely is something that is passed on from your parents. Therefore, it is an acquired, it is an inherited trait slash behavior. And so what if you can cook really well? And if you can, and you invite me over, 
Where would that fall? Correct again. Being able to cook really well, which I can't, but if you can cook really well, it is a learned or acquired trait slash behavior. It falls into that box. And then the next one says spiders building webs. Is that an inherited trait slash behavior or a learned or acquired trait slash behavior? And what about a spider building a web? Where might this one fall? So lucky enough, spiders know how to build a web. There isn't a spider school on how to build a web. So they pretty much know how to do it. Now, they might, you know, get some tips from other spiders, but essentially they know how to build their own webs. The next one says, likes to read. Would that be an inherited trait or behavior? Or would that be a learned or acquired trait slash behavior? Yes, definitely. If you like to read, which I love to read, it is something that is learned. And I hope you all learn, love to read. The next one says freckles. So where should we put freckles? You are correct again. Freckles is a trait that is passed down from your parents. So we're going to place this card in the inherited traits slash behaviors box. The next one, dogs wagging their tail. Is this inherited traits slash behaviors or is it learned or acquired traits slash behaviors? Definitely, it is another acquired trait slash behavior. These dogs, no matter how small, how big, how young, they all know how to wag their tails. And our last one, dogs sitting on command. So when you say sit, little doggy, is that an inherited trait slash behavior or is it a learned or acquired trait slash behavior? Yes, it is something that has to be taught to your dog. And unfortunately, no one actually taught that to my dog. He just runs around the house. So I know for sure that dog sitting on command is a learned or acquired trait or behavior. So before we move on, let's make sure we understand the difference between the two. As you can see from our box, inherited traits or behaviors is anything that is passed on from parent to offspring. It is something that is already inside of you, either coming from your genes or it's just instinctive. On the other hand, in our second box, learned or acquired traits and behaviors is anything that has to be taught to you. It is something that you have to learn and practice, like reading, skateboarding, cooking. So now that we know more information about inherited traits slash behaviors, and learned or acquired traits slash behaviors. Let's play a little bit of quizzes. So this first statement says, a boy begins to read a book. Is this instincts, inherited trait, or a learned behavior? Yes, it is a learned behavior. The next one says, a student writes their ABCs. What would we describe this as? Correct again, just like reading a book, writing your ABCs is a learned behavior. An owl hunts. Would this be instincts, learned behavior, or an inherited trait? Correct. An owl being able to hunt is something that they already know how to do. So this is going to be an instinct. A spider spins a web. What would we call this? Yes, just like being able to hunt, spiders, 
They know how to make those webs. So this is an, an instinct. Blank are behaviors passed down from parent to offspring. So what do your parents pass on to you? Absolutely, your parents pass on to you instincts. Those are the behaviors that they pass on to you. They are called instincts. A puppy is born with brown eyes and brown fur. What would we characterize this as? You are dynamic today. We would characterize this exactly as an inherited trait. Birds fly in groups. What should we name this as? Yes, birds knowing how to fly in groups, that's just something they know how to do. So this would also fall under an instinct. The next one says, blank are physical traits passed down from adults to offspring through genetics. Correct again, traits that are passed down from your mom and dad, they are called inherited traits. A baby started, began speaking English. Right, we would call this a learned behavior. And the next one says, a blank developed when offspring are taught a certain skill. So what do we call it when we're taught how to do something? Like to read, to write, to skateboard. Correct, we would call it a learned behavior. All right, so we got 100. So that means we're ready to prepare for this star test in May by practicing a star test practice question. So the question that I have for you today is from 2018, question 22. It says, a family takes a group picture in a park where blue bonnets are blooming. The family notices that some of the blooms are white and others are blue. The color of blooms is most likely determined by F, air temperature, G, the age of the plant, H, the types of consumers that eat the plant, or J, inheritance from parent plants. Which one do you think it would be? Well, before you decide which one you think it is, can you tell me which one you know for sure is not the reason that the plants are blue and white? Correct, air temperature does not determine the color of plants and flowers. So we know that the answer is not that first one, F. Do you see another one that you think could not be the answer? Correct, that third choice, the types of consumers that eat the plant definitely isn't the reason why the plant is either white or blue. So that leaves us with two answer choices. G, the age of the plant, or J, inheritance from parent plants. So what's the correct answer? Can you help me out? Yes, the correct answer is J. This is an inherited trait. Being blue or being white is what's passed down from the parent to the offspring. It is an inherited trait. It is the reason why those blue bonnets are either blue or white. So that is everything I have for you today. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have an awesome week and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.